Well, tonight the world is remembering Anthony Bourdain, the former chef and TV host, dead at the age of 61 in an apparent suicide. Now, CNN says Bourdain's friend and fellow chef found him unresponsive in his hotel room in eastern France. Now, this is the second high-profile death this week. Designer Kate Spade committed suicide on Tuesday. And we all want to know, what can motivate someone to take his or her own life? Nightside's Bianca Gralo talked to a local woman who contemplated suicide before turning her life around. I refer to that as, you know, the beginning of my second life because I, I really did die. Like, I, I really almost completely lost my life. I woke up that morning, I was supposed to work, so I got dressed for work, and I called in sick to work, and I sat in my car, and I swallowed the pills, and I didn't wake up for, I believe, a day and a half. My heart did stop. They said, you know, I died and came back. I wake up in the hospital, I was furious. I did not want to be alive. I had been planning and attempting suicide for probably five years. I knew intellectually that my mom loved me and that my sister loved me and that I had friends, but I was completely convinced that I was making their lives worse by being in it. There's not a debate in your head about am I worth it or am I not. This monster, this illness, is in your brain telling you that the entire world would be better off without you. And it's hard for somebody whose brain has never been broken to understand what that feels like. It's kind of like a colorblind person explaining to a non-colorblind person what the world looks like to them. Nobody ever says to a colorblind person, just get over it, see red, see green, see blue. And it is equally as ridiculous to tell me to fix my own brain without any assistance. Of course I'm glad to be alive. My second life has been amazing. I do know though that this is not something that I'm going to get over and be better from. I have had a period in my life not that long ago that I tried to go off of medication and I still had the same beautiful life, right? And I went off medicine and a few weeks into it, I'm driving home from work and I think to myself, I'm gonna drive into a tree. And I realized I can't be off medicine. I need, I need to be in treatment. This is a disease that has nothing to do with my situation. When somebody commits suicide, it's all over the internet. Their Facebook page turns into a memorial. They, and so you see this person getting all this love, right? And you think, well, cool. I want that. The problem with that is that that love was there before that person died and they didn't see it. And that's how you know they were ill. I've been on both sides. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be unwell and to be well and even to be unwell again and get well again. You will be amazed what it looks like on the other side. And I will tell you that being well is so, so worth it before you do something that you can't ever take back, before you take your life, before you harm yourself, I would ask that you just give, give us a chance. Give those of us who, will, who would like to help you just a chance.